Take a lobster from the sea. And place it in a fishmonger's window alongside a crab. A beginning and an end of one story of the Scottish creel fishing industry. But to go back to the beginning, to the Berwickshire fishing village of Burnmouth. Alistair and Ian have gone to pull a box out of the harbour. In it, they store all the lobsters they catch on the rocks until they have enough to sell at the auction. When sold, they will account for only a tiny fraction of the quarter of a million pounds worth of lobsters and crabs landed round the Scottish coast each year. But still, the boys lower their box carefully back into the harbour so that the lobsters will be kept alive and in good condition. Meanwhile, the boats from Burnmouth are fishing for lobsters out in the bay. Other Burnmouth boats, like the Dolly Graham, are a few miles south, six or seven miles offshore from Berwick-on-Tweed, where in the deeper waters there is good crab fishing. The net is out for bait for the creels. Mackerel, flounders, haddock or whiting are wanted. The winch coils automatically. The net closes. The final haul begins. Some of the fish will be sold, and some of it will be used as bait for the creels. Now the skipper can head for the fishing grounds where the creels were lowered yesterday. While the boat sails on, the crew are busy preparing the bait for the creels. At length, the skipper sights their marker boy. It marks one end of a rope on which 50 or 60 creels are strung at regular intervals. The creels have been on the seabed for 12 or 16 hours. Now the time has come to haul them aboard. The winch rattles into life and the first creel breaks the surface. Crabs have been caught in some of the creels. Sometimes only one crab, but sometimes three or more. One creel is brought aboard every few seconds. They are emptied quickly and soon the crab boxes begin to fill. Although the Dolly Graham is fishing on crab ground, lobsters are often caught. A lobster's in this creel. More care in taking it out, for if roughly handled, it may easily shed a valuable claw. So the hard work goes on until the 50 or 60 creels have been emptied, baited and stacked in the bow of the boat. the other end of the rope is hauled aboard. That done, the skipper steers the boat to another part of the fishing ground. There is a chance now to bind the lobster's claws so that they do not damage one another in the boxes. The skipper has decided to shoot the creels. The boat does not stop and one by one the creels go over the side. They must be shot in the right order and just at the right moment, otherwise the rope will become knotted and the creels may be damaged. Once all the creels are out, the Dolly Graham will go to another marker boy and haul in another fleet of creels, empty them, bait them and return them to the sea. And then to a third and a fourth and a fifth and a sixth marker boy. In all, in their nine hours at sea, the crew of the Dolly Graham may lift and return 400 creels. And having done that, the boat will return to Burnmouth. Before it gets there, there's much to be done. There's a law which says only crabs and lobsters over a certain size may be caught. Here, crabs about the smallest permitted size are being measured. If they're too small, they return to the sea. 
The decks must be washed down before reaching port and things generally made ship shape. Most days about noon, Anister and Ian can spot the Dolly Graham from the Burnmouth breakwater. Now she crosses the harbour bar to find Burnmouth a busy place. Other boats are already in and the auction market will soon begin. When it comes to unloading the boat, there's a job for all the crew and anyone who likes to help. Box upon box of lobsters and crabs are brought ashore. They must be weighed before the sale. The auctioneer looks at an outsized lobster, big for the east coast, where fishing is intensive, so that lobsters seldom get a chance to grow very large. Now the buyers wait for the auction sale to begin. A wink confirms a deal in lobsters. What am I bid for ten boxes of crab from the Dolly Graham? Ten boxes of crabs, five crabs. Another wink sends many boxes and barrels to the crab processing factory at Berwick-on-Tweed. Other buyers send lorry loads of boxes of lobsters up the hill from Burnmouth and two miles north to the fishing port of Eymouth. This is Eymouth. From here, lobsters are sent to London and many other British cities and to the continent. Frequently, lorries loaded with live lobsters go from Eymouth, race down the Great North Road to Newcastle to catch a plane which will take the lobsters to Paris and Antwerp. To meet all these demands, just when they're made, the lobsters are stored in tanks at Eymouth. Sometimes there may be as many as 30,000 lobsters in these tanks. A team of women packs the lobsters immediately before dispatch. This woman has found something unusual. She takes the lobster to the foreman. He immediately recognizes it as a tagged lobster and knows it should be returned to the fisheries research station at Aberdeen.